What is going on everyone? How are you all doing? This is your Carlo here at Mad Crypto back again with another video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a coin review on a near protocol. Special shout out to Jules and uh, follow me at Trading Talks 48 for putting this to my attention. Um, but this is a very interesting project that we're going to be covering in this video as well as technicals, of course. So with that out of the way, let's get straight to it. Cue the intro. Now, let's begin with the coin review. As I said, got to give credit where credit's due. Um, some of these articles have come from Jules, a mate of mine. As I said, go follow him on his Twitter handle at TradingTalks48. Uh, so I can't give, I can't take credit for, for that and I'll tell you which ones uh, he brought to my attention. Um, but this, this protocol, this cryptocurrency is quite an interesting one. And it's been doing very well in recent weeks, in the last few weeks. Really? Uh, so with that out of the way, let's just get straight into it. And we're gonna do this in the Magna Crypto way, uh, meaning an overview, high level overview, rather than the in-depth, nitty, picky uh, method where, you know, it's, it's gonna confuse everyone, including myself. I don't like it, to, I don't like to do it that way. I just like, like to keep, keep it simple, where everyone can understand it. Um, because it, when, when it gets too complicated, when it gets too in-depth, it just confuses everyone. Okay. So, I've got the white paper up, I'm just gonna read the overview of it and then look at the, uh, the token itself, how it's been used. Uh, and then we're gonna go a bit, bit more in-depth in into, the, into the protocol. We're gonna look at to token economics and we're gonna look at a very interesting um, article. Again, credit to Jules for finding that, a very interesting article which for me, it gives a lot more credibility to the project. So let's begin. The NIR economy is optimized to provide developers and end users with the easiest possible experience while still providing proper incentives for network security and ecosystem development. So this is a summary of the key ideas. So the um, consensus mechanism that they have is proof of stake. They say threshold proof of stake, um, but we can just keep it basic proof of stake. So validate node operators provide scarce and valuable compute resources to the network in order to ensure that the computation they run are correct, they are required to stake. Near tokens which guarantee their results if these results are found to be inaccurate, the staker loses their tokens. So they have to provide, of course, accurate information, otherwise they get punished. This is a fundamental mechanism for securing, uh, securing the network. The threshold for participating in the system is set algorithmically at the lowest possible level to allow for the broadest possible participation of validate nodes in a given epoch, so half a day. And reading a bit more into that, the reason why they did that is to you know, move more towards it being decentralized because if it's very difficult to run a node and to, to stake, then of course uh, it make it, it, the actual bunch of uh, validators um, become more centralized uh, yeah it's more centralized you know because if it's difficult for uh, for you to become a validator uh, then only a small subset of people can become validators meaning it's more of a centralized thing rather than anyone becoming a validator uh, and thus being it being more decentralized oh, um, epoch rewards note uh, operators are paid for the, for their service a fixed percentage of total supply security fee roughly 4.5% annualized. The rate targets sufficient participation levels among stakes in order to secure the network by balancing with other usage of near token in the ecosystem. I'm not going to read all of it. Um, it's not too important. Transaction costs. Usage of the network consume two separate kinds of resources. Instantaneous and long-term, instantaneous costs are generated by every transaction because each transaction requires the usage of both the network itself and some of the computation resources. These are priced together as a mostly predictable cost per transaction which is paid in near tokens. Storage costs, self-explanatory. Um, moving forward, inflation is com combination of payouts to validate and the protocol treasury minus to blah, blah, blah. Uh, overall, the maximum inflation is 5%, which can go down over time as the network gets more usage and more transaction fees are burned. 
And it is possible that inflation becomes negative where total supply decreases if there are enough fees burned. So basically the bigger the network, the lower inflation goes. Scaling, very important. This is a newer protocol, so it's gonna be much better with scaling. Uh, in a network which scales its capacity relative to the amount of usage it received, the threshold which drives the network to bring on additional capacity are economic in nature. Right, so the NEAR token. NEAR token is the fundamental native asset of the NEAR ecosystem and its functionality is enabled for all accounts. Each token is a unique digital asset similar to Ether which can be used to pay the system for processing transactions and storing data. Run a validating, validating node as part of the network by participating in the staking process. Help determine how network resources are allocated and where its future technical direction will go by participating in the governance token process. So fairly so, you know, fairly simple uh, usage for the token. <coughs> so that's essentially an overview of the near um, platform uh, economically. Uh, essentially, it's it's a you know again to just give a bit more explanation, smart contract platform where you can build DApps. It's, it's very scalable, very efficient, and very well run in terms of governance. Um, in my opinion, of course, there are much more things you can, if you go in depth, and I'm sure any uh, near, to, near protocol um, fans will tell me that I'm missing out a lot of things. But as I said, I like to keep it very simple. It's not for me, it's not about getting into the nitty gritty. Um, other people can do that. I'm just keeping it simple. Um, but for me, from a, a simple level, you can compare it to Solana, Ethereum, Cardano, all these smart contract platforms where you can build dApps. They have obviously slight differences in their uh, consensus mechanisms and uh, how scalable they are, how many transactions they can uh, do per second or whatever. But essentially they're, they're platforms to build dApps on. So that is that. Moving forward, the team um, is quite a big team I would say with a lot of experience, whether it's from Google, from Microsoft, from Facebook, it looks like a good team. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure what ICP gold medalist is, but it's it's a good team with a good experience. Uh, something that you'd, you'd wanna see <coughs> um, pushing a project forward. If the team is strong, if it's uh, got depth in it, then of course it's gonna go further. It's got a good chance of success. The CEO, let's just cover him. And um, he is an entrepreneur who started five years ago on Wall Street in 2007, left to create an open source community which grew to over 100,000 members. He led, he led Viking Education as CEO until its acquisition in 2017. Um, and as I said, the rest of the team have great experience, whether it's Google, Microsoft, Facebook, you know, six years of Facebook. Um, it's a strong team, you know, with, a, with all stars within it. Looking at the token economics, now I'm taking this obviously from CoinGecko. Max supply, which is important, uh, is is one billion. That's also the total supply. So um, circulating supply at the moment is 452 million. So that's 500 million is stored somewhere, or it's going to be released, whether it's through inflation uh, or something else. Market cap is is a top 50 market cap coin. Uh, 47 just scraped it 4.2 billion um, so it's got it's still got a fair bit to grow which is good to see high 24-hour volume as I said it has been doing very well very well in the last few uh, weeks slash months uh, so that could decrease over time um, so the token economics look decent you know 1 billion uh, tokens max supply is pretty good to see um, so it's not not too large now this is the article again, shout out to Jules for, for putting this to my attention. Um, basically this article is from Mazari, um, examining liquid portfolios of crypto funds. Essentially it's tracking the VCs where they're putting their money. A few hundred tokens of, uh, of our circulating market cap. Let me say, say that again. Of the hundreds of crypto assets, a few hundred tokens have circulating uh, market caps over 50 million. At least 100 tokens have market caps of over 500 million and a few dozens are unicorns. The smart money investors, venture capitals, 
uh, VC funds, hedge funds, mercenary liquid liquidity providers are making bets across the various sectors of DeFi, NFTs, Web3, uh, the metaverse at various stages of growth, all the way from sub 50 <coughs> uh, million to well over a billion. We've tracked down many of the top uh, VCs. Uh, basically, the, as I said, uh, they're just looking at what they're putting their money in. Now, scroll through. Um, so Bitcoin and Ethereum, granted, that's already, you know, most of them have that. Second, they've got Terra Luna, which is doing very well as well. And uh, in third place, tied for third, is Near Protocol and Oasis Network. Um, both smart contract platforms, but to date have less adoption than competitors like Solana, Ethereum and Avalanche. So, I mean, as they say, you've got to follow smart money. Uh-huh. So a lot of the VCs, a lot of the hedge funds uh, have um, put, have near protocol in their portfolios, which is a sign to say it's a, it's like now they can obviously all a lot of them can be wrong as well because you know a lot of VCs and hedge funds were involved in the 2008 crash, so it's not like they're all they cannot be wrong, but it, it is uh, an indication that because they have they have to do their checks as well, their due diligence that there's value within these cryptocurrencies so that is a sign of approval in my eyes that a lot of vcs are invested in their protocol now lastly um and as i said shout out to jules follow me at, at trading talks 48 on twitter i uh, he mentions a lot of different cryptocurrencies so give give him a follow okay. now lastly we have or not lastly uh, we have social media uh, followers, so the community essentially. So they have 120,000 followers in Twitter. I mean, this is, of course, very important. The bigger the community, the more uh, drive there is behind the project. Then it's, it's the fuel that they need to push the project forward. You could have the best project in the world, but if there's no one, no one supporting it, then it's not going to go anywhere. It's not it's just going to stay where it is and not develop, not progress. So this is a very good sign that they have over 120,000 followers. Uh, I don't know about the Instagram, but Twitter in terms of crypto is the, probably the most important one. And then of course, a bit of YouTube. Um, so this is a positive thing. I think probably anywhere, anything above 100,000 uh, shows that they have a strong community. So this is a positive thing to see. Lastly, let's transition over to the technicals and so we see what we have. Now, as I said, the last few weeks slash months have been quite good for uh, Near Protocol. I did cut, I think I covered it. It might have covered it shortly in the previous video. But I mean, from the mid July lows, it's gone up 500%. And just in the last uh, week from the bottom, it's gone up uh, over 100%. So it's, it's done pretty well. Um, in terms of the actual technicals, <coughs> key levels and how we like to do it, uh, it's broken through and made new all-time highs in the last week. Uh, we do have a massive retracement from $11.76 down to sub $10. So Nani? we just dropped below $10. That is a, a big key number, $10. So it might uh, retrace down to the next major uh, resistance or would now be support level at $6.70. I myself haven't invested in it yet, but I'll probably look to invest in it if it stays above that level $6, put in a small bag. Really? The next key level is going to be down below at $4 towards $4.60. So this area right here, you can see uh, some support. It tested it at this level. So this area uh, it could maybe extend it to that area. Uh, would be the next major level um it's going to be interesting to see the next few weeks as because it has surged massively in the last few weeks is it has it run out of steam yeah. or is it going to continue to the upside so it'd be very interesting to see what happens there on a monthly um time frame it looks like a nice and measured move up so from uh, 60 cents back in november 2 2020 Nice surge retracement uh, from April down to 
July and then a nice wave up. If you're a follower of early wave theory, there could be a retracement followed by a third wave to however much. In terms of price targets, um, because it's still, it's just scraped the top 50, if we're gonna look at uh, its competitors like Solana, like Cardano, um, you know, Solana has been obviously smashing the last few weeks slash months, and its market cap is now 55 billion. Cardano, of course, top five, 87 billion. Uh, we've got Polkadot as well, 31 billion. Um, I think Kazama as well, you could say that competitor. We've got Cosmos at 7 billion. Uh, and if you go down to the 40s, we have near at 4 billion. So at least it can get to 7, 8 billion, you know, where Cosmos is. Push further if it keeps going, it can match Polygon or oh, this Polygon's a layer two. Um, but Polkadot, which is in the 30s, so it's got potential. I'd say, let's say it got, it got to 30 billion market cap, right? Best best case scenario, top 10 coin. Um, that would be four, what's that times eight, maybe eight, so another eight X to get to 32 billion. So 8x to where, this is a very, very rough mathematical uh, calculation, but you know, if we talk about, let's run it up to 10 times eight, maybe $80, uh -huh. 50 to $80 is a rough, very rough projection, but probably could get to 50 to $80 uh, for this bull run if it gets to top 10 coin. If it gets to a top 20 level, you know, we're talking about nine billion so probably like a double from here which would be around twenty dollars so that's what i say in terms of price targets twenty to fifty dollars uh, depending on how how well it does right so to summarize it and to kind of give my overall opinion it looks like a very interesting project now there's a lot of platform-based projects that where you can develop dApps as i said kadana polka dot kizama uh, many many projects are trying to do the same thing uh, so what separates this one from the others? I would say the co-signing of the VCs. Now, yes, the technology is good, it's scalable, etc., etc. But the fact that the VCs and hedge funds are also interested in this project and I've invested in it with their money is a very uh, telling sign. So I would say for me, that's what edges it. Um, that's what makes it probably worth a, a small bag at the very least. So I will leave you with that. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Peace.